And welcome back to RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. I'm your host Mikey and today we're doing the Rainbow Waves Afghan. And you looks like here that we have little boxes that are stacking on top of each other and going up in a wave formation. Really kind of neat and this is using the back loops when we go to do this project. We're doing the back loops on every row. So on the other side when, when we go to flip this over you'll see that you can see the ridges on the other side as well. So really kind of an amazing idea. Now I did post this on Facebook and people are commenting well what if they don't like doing back loops. So what I decided over here is that I stopped doing back loops. So once I got to this pink you can see how much more flatter it looks. You can see how it changes the texture. So this pattern will work out whether you do back loops or without the back loops. You are the crochet artist. You can decide what works for you. I find on this project that the back loops are really not a big deal in order to maintain this idea. And one thing about this project too is that when we go to start it when I show you is that it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt to start but just stick with it, bear with it because it takes a couple lines for it to start working out and you're realizing that this is going to come together really well. So you're going to think when you're starting that, that you're not doing it right and in fact you are. So let's get started on that next. So before we begin the project is asking for 295 chains and you're thinking to yourself Mikey that is a lot of chains and I was thinking the exact same thing when I was doing it. I'm like it's only 59 inches how can it be 295 chains? And what we what I realized is that these chains are not only going across but we have to compensate by coming down as well when we're doing these stepping down. So we chin cha chain we're still chin cha chin cha chain chin cha cha chain and then when we come back up we're chin cha cha chain chin cha cha chain and so the 295 is not only the distance going across but it's also the stepping down and the stepping up of this particular afghan. I have to say once you get this afghan off the ground uh, once you get beyond row number two you're going to love this project. It's very very easy to follow. It's just getting beyond row number one and two that will probably be the determining factor whether you're going to be successful or not. But I'm telling you it's really not that hard. You just have to be patient and count your stitches properly. To get started I'm using Red Heart with Love today and it's a premium acrylic yarn. You can use Super Saver if you wish. It calls for 11 colors. If you don't have 11 colors you can substitute as many colors or lack of colors you wish. You can do one color if you wish. So here we go. We're just starting off with the slip knot. Remember with any of my tutorials you can find the uh, slower versions of simple little ideas on redheart.com as well as the crochet crab. So it says to chain 295 so I'm just going to start. So 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. I'm not going to drag you through 295 stitches. I'm going to be doing a swatch this size just like you see the swatch over here and this is just to get you started because once you understand the certain principles it basically repeating it is really quite simple. So continue that. I'll meet you back up where we're going to turn and start working on the very first row. So let's begin. We have our chain done and now we're going to follow row number one and it says double crochet fourth from the hook. So I'm just going to take my time going through this process. So we just count back. So one, two, three and go fourth from the hook and we're just going to double crochet. You notice how I kind of just push down on that and just to make it work. So we're going to double crochet fourth from the hook. So this chaining of here counts as double crochet eventually as well in the rules of crochet and that's something that you need to be aware of. So it says double crochet in the next two chains. So we're going to double crochet two more times. So one into the next chain and again double crochet into the very next. So now it says to skip the next two chains. So we're going to skip the one. So we're going to skip one and two and it says to slip stitch into the next. So in the third one we're going to slip stitch. So to slip stitch we're just going to slam our needle into the chain. And we're going to grab the yarn, pull it through and through. So you will notice now that this chain actually becomes a box going in the up direction. All of these boxes have three double crochets in the middle followed by this chaining on both sides of the box. So that will help you also. So it says now chain three. So here we go. So chain three, one, two, and three. And it says to double crochet again into the next three chains. So we're just repeating exactly what we did, did but on a different level up here. So we're working like it's a set of stairs. So one, double crochet into the next three. 
Okay, and so now again like we did over here is that we're gonna skip two chains. So one, two, go to the third and we're gonna slip stitch. Pull it through and through. So now you have another step. So it says to do this with the total of three times. So let's uh, begin again. So chain three, one, two, and three. And we wanna double crochet three times. Okay, so three times to all together. So one double crochet into the next three chains. Just like that. And now we again skipped two on here and then slip stitch. So do you see why there were so many chains on there is that you're using that as part of the jumping process. So we have to do it one more time. So one, two, and three. Okay, three double crochets into the next. So one double crochet into the next three, I should say. Very easy peasy. And, and sorry to cut out on the video right now. It's just I really wanna show you something really important. You will notice that we've been doing the chaining aspect and on the very final one which is the repeat three, you will notice that the repeat does not include this chaining aspect. That is at the very beginning of the aspect of making these boxes. So in the very final one, so you'll have four boxes stepping up. On the very final one, you're gonna do your three double crochets in as normal but we do not wanna finish it off the box where we normally would. So this is where I'm gonna have you just stop at this point because now we have to start going in the down direction and that requires a different process in order to go down. So at the top of the box now that we have our three across instead of doing a double crochet or doing any kind of slip stitching we actually have to chain three. So we're gonna start going in the down direction of the other side of this wave. So chain three. So one, two and three and it says to slip stitch into the next chain. So the reason why we're doing that is that we're stepping in the down direction and if my hook is remaining at the top of this box that I'm not gonna be able to step down because I'm in the wrong layer. So essentially I'm moving downward. So, so now that we've come down with the slip stitch we have to skip two more chains. So one and two go to the third and we wanna double crochet into that one. And this is where it starts looking weird on you and you're thinking you're screwing up but just stick with it. So do another one and another one. So a total of three double crochets in a row like so. So because we're stepping down every box when you're stepping down the fourth one okay would be just chaining three, one, two, and three and again we come to the very next chain and we come down for a slip stitch. And again, it's the same reason that I've already said below uh, before is that we need to get our hook down so it goes to another layer. So to go down again just before, just like before, so we wanna skip two, go to the third and double crochet three times total. Like that and then on the final one, two and three and slip stitch again and so that will complete that box. So essentially you wanna have the waves equal each other. So you can see that I have one wave. So I got one more wave to go before I know that I'm done. So you can either follow the directions or kinda of just follow that rule of thumb. Essentially let's skip over again. So one and two and go to the third for a double crochet. So you're just gonna work across your line uh, going up and down. You just gotta complete the maximum amount of boxes in order to uh, create your wave effect. Uh, really kind of simple. And so now this is the very bottom of this because we came down and we have three. So there's the top one, two, and three. So we have the top one, two, and three. So now essentially we have to start working in the up direction. So the very final one here normally we would chain three and then slip stitch down but I don't want to go down anymore. I want to go up. So we're so now that we're here on the bottom we're ready to start moving back up. So I don't want you to chain three and slip stitch down. I don't want you to double crochet on the fourth because this is what we're doing. So just like we moved up on this side with the same technique we have to do the same on this side. So if you screw up at this point you're gonna end up with too many stitches. So you just gotta make sure you have three double crochets and now you're ready to move up. So to do that we skip two and just slip stitch just like we'd already been doing before just like that and now we chain three again. So one, 
two and three and the next three double crochets are in as normal and we continue to move up and down just like I've shown you already. And so by the time you get to the end of the line you will have um, the right amount of stitches left uh, to be able to make this work into a complete wave shape and we want to do this on the back loops uh, in order to match this pattern. So the very final uh, thing here will be at the end. So you're just going to just slip stitch just like so and so voila you would end up with lap. So let's turn this project. Yours is going to be a lot bigger as I mentioned. So let's turn this project and begin working. So if you've made your afghan a different size we just want to follow exactly what we already see. So we can see that we're up and then we're going down and then we go all the way up again and then back down. So let's just follow this across and we're going to be doing the back loops only. So let's uh, begin. We are going to start off and we just want to chain three. So one, two and three and we want to match the stitch. So these three in the middle we're just going to match. Okay and I want to do the back loops. So you see that there's loops on your, your crochet project. So you got one and two and we want to come into the back one only and that's what creates the ridge. So just the back. You will find it's really not a big deal on this particular project to do back and front loops. So we just want to do three in a row on this particular one here and we want to come in and we need to go down. So in order to go down it's just like we've done before chain three, one, two and three and when we go to, we need to fasten it into this chain that's right here and we only want to go into the back loop of the chain. Okay and it makes a difference. If you grab both loops it will not look proper like this. So now we're in the down position and so essentially we can just um, double crochet ourselves now going across. So this here is the chain this is the new chain matching down. So we just want to continue now to go into the three double crochets right into the middle into the back loops only. So the big trick here is to know where what your chains are and what your stitches for double crochet are. It makes a huge difference in the satisfaction of this project. So in this case I happen to be right down in the bottom. So essentially I want to start moving back up. So what I want to do is that just like we've done always when we go across and we're going up we do our three double crochets. We slip stitch to the top of the chain right there. So the chains are matching each other then chain three. One, two and three and then you have your three in the middle again. Back loop. So I want to just go over that a little more slowly. Just let me finish this box. So I get the three in. So the next one I'm going in the up direction. So this is the chain that you see from the row below and so essentially that is where I want to slip stitch into the top of this chain and to the back loop only. Pull it together and now chain three. So one, two and three. So this chain equals this chain that I just slip stitched into. So now I have three double crochets again. So the, the biggest thing on this project is to understand if you're going up or down. And once you get it, it goes really quick. So I'm going up. So again I want to slip stitch to this chain at the top to the back loop only and then chain three. One, two and three. And I want to get the ones right in the middle for three. So just double crochet right in the middle. Back loop only. One into each. Oh I should also give you a tip at this point. I'll probably put it in this, the front of this video. If you change your hook and these uh, stitches are sloppy it really makes a difference. So I'm at the top of the box and normally if I've been going up I would have slip stitch but I'm actually going in the down direction. So once you get your three in you start going down. So you chain three and we slip stitch it to the bottom back loop of the chain that's in, in underneath in the row below. So that brings us back down and now this chain here equals this chain. So we only have our three in the middle and we, again we just do our back loops. So we're going down in the next one. So let me explain that to you again. So once we get our three double crochets in we chain three and we slip stitch it to the chain in the row below. 
Okay. Now see how it's stretched like this? This chain equals this chain. So don't be confused by that. So just pull this box. You'll see the three center and just double crochet back loops in there. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this project, if you don't want to do back loops, it's very easy just to skip over the back loops. It doesn't make a difference. The chain, you will not do back loops on the chain either. Just keep it very simple and begin. So here we go again. So chain three, one, two, and three. Slip stitch down. And we are still sinking. And then again, this chain equals that chain. We just pull it apart. We see our three in the middle and back loop. So in this pattern, every two rows, we are changing our colors. So whether you have 11 colors, whether you have up to a million colors, it doesn't matter. Um, you can not change your colors too if you want your bands of color to be wider. Again, the creativity is up to you. And then finally at the end, we just want to go into the final stitch with just a regular double crochet just like those in order to keep it balanced. So let's uh, begin. I'm going to show you how to change your color in just a second. To change your color, I'm just going to have you pull out your hook and just pull out the loop so that there's two left on. This is how we would normally do it. So you'll see on my sample that I had no stragglers hanging off. So I just want to take the new yarn. I'm just going to use this lime green, kind of contrast it a bit and just pull it through the final two. So you always want to end your final stitch with the new color only and turn your work. So we're going to cut everything. So we simply just are looking at it. Now we're stepping up when we go to start this. So we're going to work in the up direction. No big deal. I simply just want to chain three. So one, two and three just like that. And I want to take the stragglers and I want to move it around to the back side. It's just a personal preference for me. And essentially I just want to work in the three that are beginning. So just wrap and going into the back loop only. And I want to take these stragglers and just put them on top of the line so that they get stuck underneath and three double crochets. And we can tighten those up later. So this is how you would change colors without using knots so that you have a nice clean edge. Just like so. So we get our three in the middle just like you see. And again we're in the up direction so we just want to slip stitch to the top of the chain that's in the row below and now chain three. One, two and three. And again we have our three back in the middle. So once you understand those three in the middle, it's just a matter whether you're moving up or down that makes this project really kind of simple. Okay, so we're still moving in the up direction. So we slip stitch to the top of that chain. Like that and then chain three. And still continue to do the back loops. Okay, and then I slip stitch. I'm going in the up direction still one last time. Slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain. Chain three. And now I have my three in the middle again and this is the very top of the way before I start going in the down direction. So on the very end of this block is when I want to consider where I'm going next. So in this case I am going down. So like anything, chain three slip stitch down on the chain below and now the three double crochets in the boxes that are in the down direction that are in moving downward. So hopefully you understand that that chaining of three at the end when you're going down is actually just helping you get down to that layer without having to do any fancy uh, other work. And again we're still going down to so chain three. Okay we're slip stitching it to the top of that chain to bring us into the down layer. And again we just pull it apart. We see our three right in the middle and that's exactly where we want to go for back loops. So people have already started this afghan. It looks really kind of amazing. St again still moving in the down direction. So we chain three. We slip stitch to the top of the chain. Now in the original I never realized to go into um, one of the back loops of the chain. It makes a huge visual difference just so that you're aware. So now I come in and I get the three right in the middle. These are the lowest on the wave. So this is the bottom of the wave. So when I get to this uh, finishing point 
I'm now gonna start moving in the up direction. And so if I'm moving in the up direction, I slip stitch to the top of the chain over here. Just like that. Okay, and then chain three. And this is how you would complete a Rainbow Waves Afghan. And uh, one thing I would probably caution about if you're gonna do this in different sizes other than the pattern, it is really difficult to figure out the math. So in this case, I actually have um, chaining of 50 to get what you see here. And uh, it just happened to work out that <laughs> I was bang on. That is a complete accident. So I wanna say that I'm an expert, but really that is an accident. And so on the very edges, you will just simply just double crochet into the final edge to keep your stitches at the top of the thing and then just turn and then begin again looking for the ups and downs and then at the end of this you would change the color again to something different. So on behalf of redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd I'm your host Mikey. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope that you love this free pattern called the Rainbow Waves Throw by redheart.com.